Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah. So this is the periodic training session we do along with uh, Supreme. So, um, so I would like uh, people to listen and whatever questions uh, you want to raise, you can uh, put it in the chat box uh, during the presentation uh, or, or at the end of the presentation, we can uh, answer your clarifications. Yeah, we can go with the uh, mixed Tamil and English then. Okay. So since uh, we are covering uh, our uh, regional uh, people, uh, we'll do it. Yeah, this one slide visible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is our uh, agenda today. So we are going to talk about uh, a few slides about Comscope Overview. So Comscope to start for now that legacy brands, but the EP and those can start from place over and then structured cabling. So you think on structured word is from why structured cabling is most important. So we will see some kind of a connectivity. So subsystems, what are the subsystems? And the subsystem the you understand Panitale, any projects or building or multiple buildings or campus or no, complete design. So that is an important chapter, subsystems in utilization. And then we'll see what is the trends happening in the enterprise. Now, if we are the trends, so customer order requirements and so cabling on the select panano. So in the requirement panano future or for connectivity cable select panama rather discuss panano. Then category six A. So six A on the other one the important circuit. So why cat six A for all new installation? So standard recommendation on the installation is the panano better to do it with the category six A. So then and discuss panano. And then we love. Copper and fiber products update overall. So, few slides on data center. So, data center in the end of So, backbone path in 10G, 10G, 40G, 100, even 400 gig. So, first 400 gig connectivity in the data center, we channel the channel. So, trends and up focus and run. Finally, we have an interesting solution called powered fiber cabling system. So, if you have CCTV projects, any IP connectivity, PO, it will support for only 100 meters on copper. Beyond 100 meters, you need to have multiple tracks and fiber connectivity, then you need to do a copper cabling. So, with this solution, on the rack side, single cable layer, you can go up to 3 kilometers, 3 kilometers, 3000 meters, direct or device will terminate, you can power on your IP device. So, we are going to see. Uh, about power fiber solution in the final. So this is all about our uh, Comscope evolution. So as a company, Comscope and our company, Padina, it started in uh, mid of 1970s or like 76. So earlier they started supporting broadcast and two-way radio application um, kind of a coaxial. So they are pioneer in developing this coaxial cable. So in Nikam Patina versus customers or media Patina, coaxial cables telecom. They asked for Comscope cable on coaxial. So they had the point in developing. So later, but in 2004, Comscope has secured a System X uh, structured cabling brand. So System X was a legacy. Younger the start out in Patina, it starts from Graham. So Graham is known for, uh, generally known for uh, telephone invent pandans, so but it was a telephone matum a or a copper cable use pani, a pretty one or extra low voltage, DC voltage mulama. Oriental in the inner end, DC sub signals Molaman, I'm going to communicate on land road output to the one we call it as a telephone. So, generally, it is known as a telephone instrument counterparty channel. But on the copper cable, balanced parents so long, balanced pair, nothing but twisted pair. So, DC port the Rica only electrical signals from a very, very low voltage. So, other one the Plus minus jump or talk about that. The pair of that twist pan, twist pan, that the plus minus signal on the or little bit distance it can travel. So after the twist pan, that that on the balanced parent so long starting la. Then after that, that we twisted parent so long that so angada structured cabling started. So where Graham uh, then 
There is a company called Bell Labs. Bell Labs is very clearly put a lot of development innovations happening. And the Bell Labs is one that AT and T now we are lose certain pair name la mari. Then finally it has been as a system X. So system X la pati na yago pati patent solution innovation products la. Then 2008 la Comscore procured Andrew Telecom. So some of the mobility solutions towers la pati na ungle ke antenna sir ko antenna sir microwave repeaters la. Again, it has been manufactured uh, by Andrew and in our uh, Goa plant. Most of the towers in our country, 70 to 80 percent are supplied by Comscope. And the industry is going to Andrew Telecom, but uh, it is mostly from Comscope now. Then 11, 13, some of the metro sales, small sales. In 2015, Comscope has acquired a division called BNS from TE Connectivity. So TE Connectivity is going BNS division, BNS division, AmpNet Connect and ADC Cron, both are the familiar brand. So TE Connected Legacy Patnet starts from AMP and Marine products. I think you are in new types. Sir, Pandit, sir. Okay, it went on mute. I think. So, yeah. requesting people who are all joining uh, to keep it on mute, or you can uh, switch off your video also, so so that that bandwidth will not show. Okay. So 2015 uh, occurred a division called BNS uh, from T Connectivity. So as I was explaining, uh, uh, it started uh, in the Second World War uh, where um, um, Aeromarine products. So they started manufacturing connectors for ships and planes. So that is why it's called as Aeromarine products. And then it became AMP Net Connect for the structured cabling division. And then uh, later, uh, Tyco Electronics acquired, and uh, it has been part of uh, uh, TE connectivity. So Tyco Electronics became TE connectivity. And from TE connectivity, now uh, that BNS division has been acquired by Comscope. Now, under Comscope, we have a system X, and then uh, Comscope Net Connect. Instead of AMP Net Connect, we call it as a Comscope Net Connect, and then ADC Crony. So where ADC Crony predominantly known for this disconnection modules and uh, existing customers are still supporting. So mostly you'll be getting a telecom uh, products. In 2019, we acquired a company called Aries. The part of Aries, we got this Ruckus, Wi-Fi, switches, everything. So now only one company where we can offer end-to-end -end structured cabling, your Wi-Fi access points, and then uh, switching also. The complete communication product. Some other facts about Comscope. So more than 15,000 patents are required. So come uh, legacy is on a very well lapse when start a lot of innovations. So industry ke varo tak mona diye we innovate lot of products and then later standards on the approve ayer But the products pati na earlier four five years mona diye mandro kono. Then broadest portfolio. So telecommunication related water products required. Yes, it is available with Comscope. And more than 800 million we invest on the R&D so for research and development. Uh, we comes under uh, uh, Fortune 250 sized company. So partners like you, so we have more than 10,000 partners, certified partners uh, to support customers. So these are three kind of a division or verticals we can say. Uh, one is residential broadband. Residential broadband, most of the time connections are going to ISP. So, other level of products on the fiber home box, so long FTBH, so long home box, pick tights, connectors, then your space enclosures. So, either along the we are manufacturing again, it is manufacturing in our go facility. So, our centralized office length or access to the home or again, and then a connected product server, though we are supporting to supplying to most of the ISPs in our country. And then venue and campus, so be it a stadium or airports or any large building. So the mobility solution, the number of towers increase. So in building wireless, the mobility signals maybe. Uh, why is this hurricane? Why is this hurricane? 
So, sir, please explain in English only, sir. So, a lot of partners are uh, joining in from Kerala. So, can you? Oh, please... okay. Okay, okay, Krishna. So, uh, in Venon campus, we cover this mobility solution and structured cabling. So, we now we cannot keep on increasing mobile towers inside the airport or any stadium. So, where we support on the in building wireless connectivity so that you will get a proper mobile coverage. So, those products we are supporting from Comscope. And then, in the finally, we have this enterprise segment where wired and wireless solutions we offer. The entire structured cabling comes into this area. So some of the proud slide we say uh, we say it is a history of first in copper. So as I mentioned, we have a lot of patent and innovation. For example, in 1985 itself, we got something called System Max PDS solution. So uh, when you say PDS, it is nothing but it is a premises distributed system. So that that kind of solution became as a entry level of category three in 1991, where 1991 standard has approved and it has been rated as a category three. Same way in 97 itself, we got something called Gigaspeed Excel, which became a standard as approved and ratified and became a category six in 2002. So same way for uh, uh, Tachik C also, where in 2004, we got something called Gigaspeed. Uh, <coughs> So we got something called Gigaspeed um, Extending. So compared with the Excel, we got some kind of something called Extending. In 2004 itself, still we have some customers who got installed with this Gigaspeed uh, Extending, which has become a category 6A in 2007. So this is all about the copper. And if you see fiber, in 1998 itself, we got something called Laser Speed 300, so which became a standard cable of the OM3 in 2002. So same way as uh, laser speed 550. When we say laser speed 300 or 550, this uh, mentions about the distance which can support for the 10G application. So when we say 10G, it can support up to 300 meters on OM3 fiber cable. Whereas when we say 550, it supports 550 meters on OM4 cable for the 10G application. So we got it in 2003 itself in the name of laser speed 550, but in 2009 it's nine only, it has been approved as a OM4. So same way Insta patch on uh, pre-terminated solution and we have something called laser speed wide band multi-mode fiber cable. So when we say wide band multi-mode fiber cable, so generally uh, for any connectivity on fiber, so we'll be using a two fiber, one fiber for trans and one fiber for receive. So if you want to have more number of uplinks, either we need to increase a more number of fibers. Now with this help, with this wide band multi-mode fiber cable, in a same fiber itself, we can uh, use a four different wavelengths. Uh, for example, uh, you, you will be aware in the multi-mode models, they called as a 850 nanometer or 1300, 1300 nanometer. So every nanometer takes one fiber. But with the SWDM technology, the short wave division multiplexing technology, it uh, drives four wavelengths on a single fiber. Nowadays, you are getting optical optics like uh, your fiber optics, which can support four wavelength on a single for port itself. So to support that, we needed better uh, fiber cable on multi-mode. That is why we call it as a wideband multi-mode fiber cable. And that became a standard as a OM5 now. So this is this wideband multi-mode fiber cable will play a major role inside the data centers. And then we have something called uh, SystemX uh, low, ultra low resolution. Any fiber uh, you are aware it is be measured on the lo losses only. How much loss we are getting on a, for a particular kilometer or number of connections or spacing. But what are products we are giving uh, entry level products are low loss only. But beyond that, we do support on a ultra low loss uh, product so that it can support for beyond additional distance. Whatever standard set, if standard size 150 meters, with the ultra low loss solution, it can go for another 30 meters or for any. 40 or 100-year connectivity. So this is our facility, our own manufacturing facility at Goa. So uh, water products we manufacture here for domestic uh, purpose as well as we export to other country also. So we so we regularly manufacture all these telecom products and then antennas requirement. And then in our structured cabling, we have a cable boxes manufactured, patch cards and fiber patch cards, everything. So it, it's been certified with the uh, well-known ISOs and TL uh, certifications are available. So let's get into the subject now. So let's see 
what is structured cabling so the name itself we can understand it is a structured if you see the opposite meaning or opposite name it will be unstructured when i say unstructured it can be like anything see if you don't have any rules and regulation on that uh, roads traffic so people can drive on their own there won't be any distance limitation or speed limitation so anything can happen lot of collisions accidents everything so it is a, it is, a, it is called a structured cabling system so what it mean so here any projects where it is well planned structured cabling facilities in the flow of information or sharing of resources it will help uh, whatever technology you want to use it today or tomorrow so for example there is a standard in place if you want to have a rack inside your uh, room or telecommunication room it recommends what is the space you need to give at the rear side front side and closer to the wall so there are a lot of recommendation like pathway system so we need to design the pathway systems generally whenever you want to lay a pathway or conduit the field ratio so whenever if you ask uh, field ratio what is the field ratio on the conduit tunnel people say 80 to 90% water space is available they want to use it and that is not the real case so standard always recommend to plan a pathway on a 40% field ratio only you can go another 20% during the installation when you are doing a designing you can go for 40% of field ratio on your pathway system whether it is a conduit or raceways and then you can have additional of 20% cushion during installation you may get additional points to lay between uh, wherever additional points required so you can go up to 60% so remaining 40% should be a free space why it is required because you are, we are sending a electrical signal only now we are uh, deploy sending lot of uh, more uh, higher bandwidth like 1 gig 10 gig and all and we have started using a poe application so when you are using poe and the higher bandwidth the lot of electrical signal will be increased when electrical signals are increased there will be heat dissipations so heat dissipation will be there and then cross talk noise uh, disturbance from one cable to other cable disturbance so you need to have a proper breathing space to uh control manages heat as well as the, to avoid this uh, crosstalk uh, issues between the cables so you will see the advantages consistent performance will be there one, one simple example so in the structured cabling you will be doing the termination with the tool only there won't be any hand crimped termination which comes under unstructured cabling anything you are doing hand crimping which is considered as a unstructured cabling only so both the side you need to use it proper tool to terminate it like in the workstations area you need to use the information outlet where either you use a punched down tool termination or the SL series tool to terminate your um, net connect IOS and then at the rack side also you will use a punch down tool even in the telecom segment if you see the uh, telecom connectivity what BSNL or any other player giving even they do the termination with the tool on it so nowhere you see a removing the insulation and then doing the termination so that is called as a idc technology the termination happens the technology name is idc it is nothing but insulation and displacement contact so during the punch down so what will happen you will give the impact on the particular core it will get connected with the pins available kind of two blades available in the information outlet gets contacted so it will not cut any insulations or it will not do any mechanical so it creates a space it creates a gap on the insulation and then it makes sure that the copper connector and the cable and then contact material on the ivo or jack panel gets connected properly so that is why it's called the insulation displacement contact so it will displace the insulation and then gets connected so you can see in the site maybe you can uh, take out the cable and then check how the termination happens so you can see none of the insulation or small parts will not go off but only the displacement will happen in the insulation and gets connected to the io so that is the reason consistent performance will be there simplify most add changes so any change if you want to do it at the rack side you can just change the patch cards or on connected connect to the active devices so you don't need to change any of the cabling so because panel already terminated so unless until if you go and physically disturb the cable then only it will come out of the panel or ios so troubleshooting will be easy so there will be a standard in place for the documentation labeling so once you follow the labeling structure so troubleshooting will be easy so again somebody disturbs the cable or any rodent issue that structured cabling will remain same so you don't need to have any 
regular maintenance. So it supports for uh, future applications of whatever structured cabling we are planning. It's not only for today's requirement. So you should plan for uh, what is required for tomorrow because it is also part of a construction or uh, building an interior uh, activity. So every time you cannot keep on doing a change. So make sure that what is required for the next 10 to 15 years for the customer so that you build the proper structured cabling. So it supports for multi vendor products. So when you say multi vendor products, the RJ45 means yes, it is RJ45 which should support for any brand of uh, system for active devices. So it is not that this particular connector should go with this part kind of a patch card only. No, it should support for the multi vendor pro products. So any kind of systems you bring it, any kind of active system such as you bring it, your connectivity should support. This is a small uh, chart to explain uh, importance of investment on why customer need to invest on the structured community. So you can talk about this slide or this points to the customer. So this is a comparison between the initial build when customers building a uh, site, initial investment on IT and down the line 15 years, how much they will be investing on reinvesting. For example, for servers, they may invest around 20% on the initial build. The orange is represent the initial build and blue graph represent the 15 years of life. Whereas the down the line, the next 15 years, they may uh, additionally add close to 25% or 30% they need to reinvest on the servers. Whereas software initially it may be 40%, but for the next 15 years, they need to invest nearly 30% for the renewal or patches or firmware update. Computing hardware, so initially it may be a 30% of overall IT budget, then it can go close to 40% for upgrading, maybe three years or five years when they need to uh, invest on the computing hardware. But whereas structured cabling on overall IT investment, it is less than 10% only. You can take it as a 8%. For the next 15 years, maybe two to three percent only you need to invest it, maybe for the upgradation of patch cards or some of the components required. So otherwise, the well designed and installed structured cabling will, it will give you a life for many years. That's why we give warranty for 25 years for the connectivity which is installed at the customer place. So this is the important uh, chapter, the subsystems, so six subsystems. If you understand this six subsystem, so any kind of a design, if you want to do it, whether it's a campus or individual building or multiple building, you can able to work on it. So let's see what are the six subsystems here. There are two different uh, names given, like one is ISO IC standard and other one is the TAEA standard. Whatever name mentioned, for example, uh, floor distributor, the number two. So as per ISO standard, they call, uh, call it as a floor distributor. Whereas in TEIA, they call it as a telecommunication room or horizontal cross connect. See, these are the standard defined names. So whenever you work on a bill of material or talk to the customer, you can start using this name. So for easy understanding, we take this um, ISO names. For example, the first one is horizontal cabling. In the cabling which goes from your workstation, work area or meeting room, whatever table you are talking, from that area to the rack area. So that is called as a horizontal cabling. It covers here. I was faceplate patch cards on the work area and then cable and then gets connected to the telecommunication room. So generally we call this telecommunication room as a switch room, hub room, server room. So we have different names. So, but as for TS they call this a telecommunication room or horizontal cross connect. So, so imagine you have any office floor, you have a horizontal cabling comes from your workstation, I was faceplate patch card and then cable and then comes to your floor distributor. So floor distributor means so it distributes from that particular room. It uh, all the distribution happens to the work area, whether it's a meeting room or Wi-Fi points. So what will happen if you have multiple flows? So this is for the one single floor uh, example. If you have a multiple flows for that particular building, you, you have some location called building distributor. Either it can be in a ground floor or first floor that for that particular uh, building. So that is called as a building distribute distributor location. Whereas in TIA they call it as a intermediate cross connect. So the floor distributor, particular floor, whatever room we are talking, hub room or switch room, it is called as horizontal crossing or telecommunication room. And the location for that particular building, which is called as a building distributor in ISO, whereas it is called as an intermediate cross connect. And if it is a multiple building, let's say you have a big campus, so you may have a data center or some main uh, server room. So that is called as a campus distributor as per ISO standard. 
whereas in TA standard, it is called as a main cross connect. So with this, the first two four itself, we can able to imagine, you can able to do the design. So whatever floor comes, you can you will have a horizontal uh, connectivity, and then it comes to the floor distributor. If you have a building, it comes to the building distributor. If you have multiple building, then you will have one campus distributor. If it is a 10 building, so every building uh, you will have a building distributor. 10 building distributor or nine building distributor will be there. Whereas the main building, the location called as a campus distributor. So that main building or that campus distributor will support for the multiple buildings in a campus. And then the each building where from the building distributor, it goes to the floor distributor. Then when it comes to the backbone connectivity. So in ISI standard, they call it as a campus backbone or building backbone. When you say building backbone, it's all between the floors on the same building. So either from first floor to the ninth floor, first to eighth or tenth, whatever floors you are getting on the floor, it is called as a building backbone. Whereas in TA, they call it as an intra building backbone. So and then water connectivity comes building to building or one that main campus to the multiple buildings, it is called as a campus backbone connectivity or inter building connectivity. So we say internet or intranet. Internet is connecting to the outside world, where intranet is inside your office. So same terminology. Intra building backbone means within the building, whatever connectivity you are giving, it is called as intra building. Where from one building to the other building or a campus building to the other buildings, it is called as an inter building backbone connectivity. So, with this fifth one, you are covering both the backbone connectivity requirement for your campus. If you don't have any other multiple building, only one single building is there, then you start with the horizontal cabling, then floor distributor, then building distributor. Yes, with this, it will this building distributor may work as a campus distributor also. And then finally, you have something called building entrance facility. This is a uh, uh, standard recommendation. So whatever ISP cables, so anything cable comes from outside, it should be terminated at the entrance itself. So they should not bring all the ISP cable, what is coming from the outside, directly coming into the data center or your campus distributor location. So it should get terminated outside or entrance within the entrance. There is a rule called 50 feet within the 50 feet or 15 meters within the distance you need to stop your outer cable and then do the transition with your indoor cable and then bring it to the data center. So this is also recommended by standard. So, so this six subsystem is most important. So you can make a note of it. So with this, you can able to do the design or of any, any kind of a requirement or projects you are getting. So these are the typical pictures what we saw uh, when we say additional cabling. It starts with the work area, your desktop or meeting room or any access point. See where your end device you are going connect, connected into the flow. So from there you will get a horizontal cabling and which comes to this particular room. So we call it as a telecommunication room or cross connect or flow distributor. So if you see the standard length, so uh, there are two different uh, length when you whenever you want to do the testing we can see permanent link and channel link testing when we see permanent link from the panel to the telecommunication outlet like from the face plate to the panel that is called the permanent link so that distance should be maximum 90 meters only if you include patch cord on both the sides 55 meters you can add then it will become a 100 meters so when another customer or anybody asks so what is the maximum distance limitation? You can say 100 meters. That is including patch cord, which is called as a channel link. If it is a permanent link, which is from panel to the information outlet, that is 90 meters only. And this is a typical example for all your building distributor. So as I mentioned, every floor you have a uh, floor distributor, which is called the horizontal cross connect. And then you bring all the backbone connectivity to that particular building, either in the first floor or second uh, ground floor, which is called as a building distributor locations. So if if customer says they are sufficient with the copper backbone connectivity, uh, where they don't uh, depend on the higher bandwidth, so you can go ahead with the copper cable or generally customer chooses fiber cable only. So here in the picture, you can see it's all indoor rated fiber cables, so which is meant to support only for the indoor uh, applications. So this is a picture for your campus distributor. So let's say if you have a multiple building. Let's say this is a campus uh, distributor building here. Yeah, from here, water cables you are taking to the building uh, location. So it is called as a inter-building backbone or uh, campus uh, inter-building backbone connectivity. 
So generally, most it will be on outside plant cable. OSP means outside plant cable. Whereas in the previous slide, what you have seen, it's a indoor rated fiber cables. So you need to understand which location you want to do the fiber cabling, whether it is a riser rated or building to building or floor to floor. Based on the site condition or env environmental condition, you need to select the proper uh, fiber cables. So this is the typical picture for the entrance facility. So this is the standard recommendations. So water cable com comes from the outside. Uh, it has a petroleum. Uh, you have a gel filled cable, so it is also part of a petroleum product. So you are not supposed to bring those outer cable directly inside your building. So you need to have a entrance facility, whether it's a copper or fiber. So do a kind of a almond LA for uh, fiber and then uh, do the transition point. Take with the indoor rated cable and then connect it to your uh, data center or any uh, core racks where you are placed all the switches. So well, with this, we have covered on the importance of uh, six subsystems. Uh, if you see the connectivity, so if you want to do a design on copper connectivity, so you can imagine you can start from the work area. Like as an individual user, you imagine how this connectivity happens for your system. If you have, I assume that imagine that you have a system in front of you, a view in the table. Just imagine what is the first component comes from your table. So first is the uh, patch cut. So this is your system in your desk. So it starts with the patch cut, and then that patch cut where it goes so one one end it's connected to the system, other end it goes to the information outlet. So with that information outlet, it will be mounted onto the face plate. So here itself you can see the patch cut, IOS, and then Face plate. There are three components. And then next one is the cable, your horizontal cable, whether it is a CAT6 or category 6A, then gets terminated into the jack panel, jack panel or patch panel. Then you do the connectivity to the switches. So if you see the components, only five components required for any copper connectivity. So you take any, whether it's IP phone or camera or any access points, any IP devices. Imagine the first one is the patch card. So if you say patch card for system, patch card one and patch card two, so two numbers record. So that is a line item one. Then the information outlet, whether it depends on the application, you can cho choose a different colors. Then third one, you have a face plate, that is a third line item. And then fourth one is a cable, and then fifth one is panel. So only five components, components is required to make any connectivity on the structure cleaning. So you may have, you can add a back box also, whatever racks, accessories record. So that is additional, but for any connectivity, only these five components. So these are the five components here. So here, to easy understand, I explained from the system point of view. So patch cards, I use face plate, cable, and then your panels. So same thing here, UTP cable, face plate, I use jack one, and then patch cards, user end, and then dragon. If you want to have a voice connectivity on a structured cabling, then you need to have one more uh, panel, then IDF and then MDF. So in this, we have seen about the data connectivity. When it comes to the voice on structured cabling, assume that you have a uh, telephone and then uh, you have a RGL and patch card. Generally, it comes with the telephone instruments. Then you have a IVOS there, IVOS face plate, then your horizontal cable, then panel. In short, if it is a direct IP phone, like in the earlier slide, like a data, it gets splashed directly to the switches. If it is a voice connectivity, it goes to the another panel because whatever the output from the EPBX, you will be terminating into the one more panel because directly you cannot take the archer party to connect it. So assume that this is your uh, EPBX, and then from there, you whatever output comes, you terminate in the MDF box, and then you'll have an idea where you bring all the uh, racer cables from multiple flows or multiple uh, telecommunication room, you terminate here and then you do the connectivity between this IDF and then MPO with the help of hookup wire or jumper wire cables. So the whatever racer cable you are bringing, you terminate at the rear end of the panel. So it will be terminated on the four and five uh, pins. There is a blooper. And then with the RJ40, you can do the patching for all the wise connectivity. So only thing is additional component is IDF and MDF, both are same only. And then you have a riser cable record and then additional panels record. So with this, we have covered uh, your basics connectivity, six subsystems. So how the copper fiber, uh, copper on data and voice uh, gets connected.
any any questions uh, anything if you, if you really want to ask you can ask maybe you can um, break for a minute if any questions from anybody you can unmute and then ask questions <clears throat> or if you have questions, you can put it in the chat box also. Maybe up, at the end of the session, uh, we can able to answer on it. So let's proceed. Um, let's see what is the trends happening in the enterprise segment. So there are five key uh, trends happening nowadays. Whenever you meet a customers or if you, you can um, feel this, what is the trends happening? So one is the mobility. So everywhere uh, we have a mobility now. So uh, it is very rare that uh, every customer using a desktop and then uh, uh, phone on the disk. And then the next one is the bandwidth. So they need a better bandwidth now. So it is just not a monthly network connectivity. They need a better bandwidth inside the office. So apart from that bandwidth, nowadays power is also most important now. So most of the devices we are connecting with the PoE you now. So it is not only a camera, a lot of IP devices which uh, we are getting into on PoE. Even your lighting systems, lights, whatever the light fitting which is coming in your office, in that tunnel it is available with the IP lighting. With the simple larger 40 by uh, ports on the ceiling, you can able to power on your lights. And then network convergence. As I mentioned, it is not only a data or voice. Whatever communications, whatever um, services they are having inside the premises, everything they want to bring it into a network, whether it's a CCTV or fire alarm system or any BMS, everything. So that is why we are talking about IoT. So Internet of Things, so your light systems, anything, your sensors, everything they want to bring it under network so that they can able to monitor maintain maintenance it properly. If you see the another key trend is everything moving towards ceiling. If you look at the office connectivity water, so in the DEX level, you may need only a systems or phone. For if it is a Wi-Fi enabled office, so everything comes from the ceiling. Your Wi-Fi access points in the ceiling, CCTV is there, your thermal sensors, uh, access control. So everything is moving towards ceiling only. So the floor lower points are very, very limited nowadays. So if you see the IoT growth every year, 30% growth keeps happening now. So being the healthcare, hospitality, retail and banking, commercial. So healthcare, it's keep on moving. So we are able to see a lot of uh, developments and growth happening on the healthcare. So which after COVID, we can see the difference. So how importance uh, we are giving to this healthcare segment. So there, if you take any simple hospital, they need a proper connectivity. Because like a commercial building or any other offices, you cannot keep on rework on it. So there is a separate standard for healthcare segment itself. So there is a standard which recommends how many points required in a, in a particular operation theater or laser machine or X-ray rooms. So they define it. So how many number of ports you, you must have. So being a hospital, you cannot keep on uh, rework or additional points requirement. So initially you need to build the recommendation given uh, how we need to work on the hospital uh, kind of a project. So if you see the connectivity application, what customer are using. One is a security system, AV system, HVAC, lighting, BMS, in-building wireless IT. So if you see here, most of the places they use a different types of cable to make the connectivity up and running. So whereas in IT, uh, we use this uh, uh, four per tested cable. So generally they go ahead with a different uh, vendors uh, for each and every solution. But with the uh, future uh, trends or what are trends happening here, you can able to power on with your simple structured cabling for all your applications. So everything is becoming now IoT. As I mentioned, light systems, we have seen some of the customers, they started using a light systems with the simple structured cabling. So they have, apart from your regular network, so they will add one more switch with the PoE enabled switches. So where the data is very less only. So for light systems, the 10 MBPS is sufficient to just to enable the sensors, how much power it's working, on, what is the brightness, everything, all this information, it's very less information is required. And then the most important is PoE, so the power. 
So now we can imagine for the two by two fitting uh, fittings. So with the 15 watt watts itself, we can get a better power supply, better lightning system, light systems. So we are seeing a lot of installations happening with the uh, structure curing itself. So as I mentioned here, it is not only a desk, uh, desk phone or uh, systems. So a lot of devices, your Wi-Fi access points, camera, everything. We have something called a universal uh, connectivity grid. So uh, what you can do is you can have a more number of points on the ceiling itself. Whenever you work on a uh, connectivity requirement for a floor, you don't need to depend on the heat map to work on the access point. Then you need to work on the CCTV point. Then you need to work on the light systems, everything. So what standard says you convert that ceiling into multiple grids and provide a number of points uh, required on each and every grid. So whenever you add a device, with the help of patch card, you can start connecting it and the enable your devices. If this is a wireless technology, uh, in 2000, it, it started the just 11 MBBS only, 11 MBBS of Wi-Fi devices. And then if you see the trends now uh, recently, it's all going beyond the 10 gig now. If you see the latest standard of 802.11 AX, which is recorded 10 GBBS input for your wireless access point. Unless until you give a proper input, your Wi-Fi signal or your ba uh, bandwidth will not function properly. So again, proper connectivity is required for your Wi-Fi access points. If you see the PoE evaluation, so it install started with the 15 watts, 15.4 watts requirement, but it was supporting thin clients or biometric control or the earlier wireless standard on the use of 802.11. Then later, if you see, it has been developed into 30 watts of requirement. So with the 30 watts of requirement, we can able to see you can power on your PTZ camera, alarm systems, as I mentioned, lighting, lights, light fittings, what comes in the ceiling. Then I can standard improved. They developed their PoE for 60 watts of requirement. With the help of 60 watts, imagine you can able to power on your laptops also. So nowadays, whatever reason laptops we are fitting, generally it comes with the C pin also the water mobile charger we are doing it so very less power nowadays whatever devices are we are getting it so it's all triggered very less power only so most of the devices we can able to cover on with the 60 watts now the recent update uh, on standard is 90 watts they upload so imagine 90 watts we can able to drive on the simple structured cabling connectivity your four per cable with the ios at uh, the user end with the patch cards panel you can able to power on 90 watts of uh, any IP devices with the network connected. So we have a, uh, first developed the uh, switches from Ruckus, which uh, supporting for 90 watts of rec power requirement. So you see, you, you are seeing this evaluation on PoE, the wireless, which is required at 10G connectivity. So to support all the things, what type of cable is required? So the TA and ISO, they are recommending category 6A for all the new installations because if customer wants to drive a 60 watts tomorrow or 90 watts tomorrow, so what type of cable will support? There are limitations on CAT 5 or CAT 6, but whereas CAT, CAT category 6A uh, will be sent for all your 90 watts power requirement as well as 10G connectivity. So this is a simple comparison between other categories uh, on 6A between other cables. Here you can see. Cat 5E, Cat, category 3 and over, we are using it. So there are a few, few installations on category 5E, and then 6, 6A, 7, 7A, and 8 also. If you see the here, there are difference between all the bandwidth. So Cat 5E doubled for 100 megahertz of connectivity on end to end. And uh, uh, when you want to drive 1 gigabit of connectivity, so standard arrived as a, that should be a 250 megahertz supported cables and products. So that is become a category 6A. Then to support for 10G connectivity, they said uh, you need to have a 500 megahertz of connectivity on end to end. Then it became a category 6A, where 7 supports for 600 megahertz, 7A for 1000, and uh, category for 2000 megahertz. So category 8, uh, CAT 7 and 7A, we are not mostly using it, but because that is required on Terra connectors. So it is not the RJ45, it is a Terra connector. It's a totally different connector now. This it's not ratified where in the Europe market they use category 7 and 7, but they use they don't use uh, 7 and 7. Yes, there is a category 8 which is developed for the data center, but again, there is a distance limitation for 30 meters only. And they want to drive uh, 25 gig or 40 gig, 
the distance limitation 30 meters with the patch code it is a 40 meters so so there nowhere it is taking place in the data center now so everywhere it is uh, fiber ports on the data center if you take category 6 it is on 500 megahertz whatever distance we cut for 1 gig it can support for uh, 100 meters for 10 gig also it can support for the 100 meters so uh, better supported for the poe also poe plus plus which is uh, nothing but uh, your 90 watts poe application the cable is the twist ratio is more compared with the category 6 and the most important thing is the insulation thickness so whatever data we are transmitting on the copper cable it travels on on top of the copper conductor but your insulation is most important and the thickness of the insulation and then test ratio it increases so that uh, it can support for the 10 key connectivity as well as the, it, it takes care of the heat dissipation when you want to drive 60 watts or 90 watts of uh, high power PoE on a uh, cable whereas in category 6 uh, it can support only 37 meters only for the 10 key connectivity so when you say when you go for cat 7 or cat 6 say again supporting on of 40 is uh, very rare you need to go ahead with the terra connector and then you need to invest on terra connector to also for the patch code so already uh, the dip is happening on the market share where this category 6a uh, the market share is keep on increasing so these are the key reasons why you need to choose category 6 kind of a solution whether it's a cable or i was end to end connectivity so 10g base up to 100 meters it can support and then whatever Wi-Fi technology are going to come up, our customers are going to come up, it can support um, uh, to make connectivity for up to uh, 10G of uh, PoE bandwidth. And then PoE applications, so compared with the 6 and the 5 if it is a less watts of 15 watts or 30 watts, yes, you can manage, but in future, if you are going to get 60 watts or 90 watts, so 6, there will be challenges to make uh, connectivity, but 6 a it is withstand to, so, to take care of 90 watts with the 10 gig connectivity. So any new installation, so as I mentioned, so for health care, uh, it recommends uh, the standard is TA8779. You can just put the standard code in the Google, so you'll get a complete details what uh, this TA8779 it recommends, what how we do it. And for education, there is a standard called TA4966. So they also recommend what type of connectivity, how classrooms and all you need to cover. So both the standard recommends category 6A only for all the new installations. Now it is available with the unshielded as well as the shielded solution. So it depends on the customer whether uh, if it is a factory in environmental uh, conditions where EMA issues on the well, then you can use a shielded cable. But for all other office areas, you can use unshielded um, solutions. The most important thing is you select a category, category 6A cable, I use panel, everything better, Wi-Fi access points, better switches, everything. But the most important thing is the maximum cost what you're investing on the structured cable is the cable. Cable boxes, what customer invest. The important part is what type of jacketing metal you are selecting it. So there are three different type of jacketing metal. One is a standard PVC, and then you have a plenum uh, resurrected PVC, and then low smoke resurrection check-in metal. In the standard PVC, if there is any fire accident happens or any fire happens, the flammability will be very high. Whatever uh, fires uh, catches, it catches immediately and then spread also. But other side, if you see the toxic level, since it is a PVC, it emits more uh, dark, uh, dense toxic. So it's very difficult to handle. But whereas in plenum rated, uh, flammability very low only, but since it is again not PVC, the toxic level will be very high. So it is used only very few area where plenum means you have this air con area for, um, inside the false flooring or uh, or above the false ceiling. So those area called as a where your airflow containment area is there, it is called as a plenum area. So those area you can use a plenum rated cable. The other one is the low smoke uh, zero halogen jacketing metal. So in the name itself, you can understand low smoke zero halogen. Yes, uh, flammability will be very medium only, but toxic level will be less. So that is it is called as a low smoke. And the halogen will be very zero. So most of the fire accidents, if any casualty happens, it's not because of fire accidents or fire burns. So if you inhale two, three times on the toxic dark smoke, then the lungs get choked. That's why people uh, casualty happen. So always just see what type of jacketing material you are recommending to the customers.
So on a overall portfolio, so we have a cables uh, right from Cat3, Cat6, Cat6, uh, shielded, unshielded, and then panels, whether you want in one U or two U, uh, straight panel or angle panel, loaded or unloaded. So we can give options whatever required. And then information outlet on UTP as well as the shielded. So and then standard patch cuts here, and then reduced diameter patch cuts. So if you have more number of patch cuts coming into the rack, where if you want to reduce, uh, you want to manage the space properly, you can use this reduced diameter patch cuts. So comparatively, standard patch cuts almost it is a 50% of reduced space on the cabling jacket material. And then you have your racks and cable managers. It's all purely a network rack, open rack, uh, with the vertical cable managers. Then you have a face plates for different type of combination, single port, two port, four, five, six, until eight port also we can give. And these are some of the accessories uh, where uh, uh, you can recommend to the customer. If customer says they want to lock the ports, wherever unwanted ports, they don't want uh, somebody to um, access those and then misuse it. So you can give a locks to block the RJ45 ports. Even it can fit into any of the IOs or any switch ports or server ports. Anything RJ45 slots, you can lock it with this accessory. And you have a patch card lock also. So, like a CCTV or any alternate uh, systems or some of the important devices where you want to secure the patch cards. So you can put a lock and then cover it. So these are some of the accessories are available. Uh, just And then most important uh, connector is we call it as a CCE. It is nothing but sealing connector assembly. So for example, any points if you want to do it in the ceiling, generally what we do, we use uh, four different components. One is you bring the cable, and then you fix a back box on the ceiling, and then you take the cable, turn it into the IVO, and then you have a face plate. So the IVO goes into the, into the face plate, that face plate gets uh, fitted into the back box, and then you use a patch cards to connect the devices in the ceiling. So these are the four different components required. Whereas with the help of CCA, you bring the horizontal cable. So it is nothing but the termination area will be on the other side also. Both the side you have this kind of a termination. You bring the horizontal cable from the rack and do the termination here. Again, it is a structured cleaning system. The other end, you have a single ended patch cards. Either you'll get a connector with the patch card itself from the factory, that is one part number. Otherwise, you can take only a connector. You bring the horizontal cable and then terminate it. The other end, you take, for example, if you have a five Wi Fi access points, if you want to connect with the ceiling uh, connectors. So you take some two or three patches, cut it to two, you will get a Two ended, so use one patch cut. The other end, RJ45 goes to the devices. The other end, what is cut cut area? You do the termination. For example, in RJ45, so you do the termination. The output will be RJ45 socket. But here, both the side you do the side DC termination. The other side also you do the termination. So like, typically, you are you are joining a cable with the structured way, the horizontal cable, and then patch cards. You are joining with this proper IDC technology that is called the ceiling and interest. So as I mentioned, it comes from there is a ceiling connector assembly, and then it comes with the 1.5 meter of uh, five feet of patch cards, or you take only a connector, you, you cut the patch card into two, and then do the termination, connect the other end to your Wi-Fi access points. If it is a shielding required, yes, we have a shielding capsules separately, and then you can put it into this uh, CCA connector. Any any questions as of now, or any doubts on uh, copper? Pandi sir, we have uh, uh, someone raised a question in chat box. Sir. Okay. So let me answer before uh, moving to. Yep. Uh, about price, uh, whether it's premium uh, is costly. Yes, platinum is costly enough, so that is a completely different uh, material uh, which we use. So in India, only one or two installations. Otherwise, uh, uh, we can say uh, more than nearly ten times costly than the regular one. Okay, what type of punch tool recommended for Comsco CCA? It is a toolless termination. Just you need to. Create a gap. We don't say you need to untwist it. 
So generally, whenever you want, you want to do the termination of the IOS or panel, try to create a gap on the twisted uh, gap and then place it into the slot. Then you can do the termination. So CCA it's a toolless termination. So you can uh, color code wise, you can uh, place the pass and then you can put a cap and then close it. Maybe for closing tightening, so you can use some kind of a tool to close it. Otherwise, you no need to use any specific tool to do the termination. If any questions, you can unmute yourself and then ask. Any other questions before moving to fiber? Manager, sure, please go ahead. Actually, one more question is there. Sir. One second. In the voice connected IDF and which make available with the net connector. So it's a com scope. So we give I think it is from uh, it is a crony, it is comes as a com scope now. So we can support for both uh, net and system accelerations. Most of the fibers, it's all everything will be on com scope name only. Okay, you can, you can put a questions in the chat box. Maybe after this fiber session, also we can answer it. So we'll continue with the fiber. Sure, sir. You can go ahead, sir. Please. Okay, fiber. So we'll cover what is uh, basic fiber, how functions, everything, and then whatever connectors, adapter, uh, everything. So, so in a fiber, uh, generally you will be aware uh, there are two types. One is a multi-mode and then single mode. So generally, multi-mode where it is used is for the shorter distance. Uh, on a typical example, you can say within the building, inside the building, floor to floor connectivity, or inside the data center. Most of the data centers between racks, everything will be on multi-mode fiber only. So there is a distance limitation for the multi-mode cables uh, where your optical, optical uh, optics, we say SRP or QSRP, it's a better one which can support for the lesser distance within your data center or floor to floor connectivity. So those kind of power uh, will be very less so that you can able to cover with their multi-mode cable to reach the other destination. So for simple example, if you are uh, connecting with a 10G connectivity, let's say example for 10 gig of fiber optic connectivity, whereas in the multi-mode in a OM3 cables. So, so in the slide, you can see OM1, OM2. So we are not using anything on OM1, OM2. Nowadays, uh, we are using OM3 and OM4 on backbone connectivity. OM5 specifically, we are using it for uh, data center applications. So if we take a OM3 on 10G, it can support for 300 meters. On OM4, it can go up to 550 meters. If it is uh, 40 gig or 100 gig connectivity inside your data center, then OM3 can support for 100 meters. On OM4, it can support for 150 meters. So mostly multi-mode cables are used inside the building or inside the data centers or within the building. Single mode, there is no limitation on the single mode fiber cable. So whatever optics you are putting on the one end, whether 10 kilometer supportable optic so you are putting or four, four kilometer or 50 kilometer optics in the single mode cable can carry. So if you see the fiber uh, construction, so in the multi-mode, the core phase will be a 50 micron uh, water core. When we say fiber, it is made up of a core and cladding. There are two components. One is a core on top of this cladding. So if, for example, any 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 mirror, if we look, so generally if you, what we are looking at the home and all, so we see a face reflection. So how it is happening? So there are some kind of a material uh, coated on the back side. So there are two methods. One is a reflection and then refraction. So reflection happened because of the refraction, refraction index. So if you don't have any refraction, so the signal or whatever, uh, light so it will pass through if it is an open glass or something 
like a mirror what we have on the car windshield. So it is open and we, we are able to see the other side. So there is no refractive index on, on the mirror component on the other side, but whereas other mirror what we see, there is a refra refraction index in the rear side. That's where reflection is happening. The same thing used on your fiber connectivator. So there is a, something called core and then cladding. When we say fiber, it is part of it, two components. That is a core and cladding. So always it is measured on the outer diameter only. The measurement will be on outer diameter. So here you can say this is the core area and this is the cladding area. So whenever light signal is passed from the one end, it's the light travel started traveling the core. And because of the refractive index, so the signal bounces back inside the glass itself and then reaches to the destination. Otherwise, it will be jump out of the glass core and then move out outside. That's why you have a core and cladding. Generally on multi-mode, the core size will be a 50 micron and then cladding will be on 125 micron of outer dia. That's why generally say 50 slash 125, 9 slash 125. So the 125 stands for the outer dia of the cladding area and then inside the cladding you have a core area. If you see the single mode, so your core face will be a 9 micron. So here you can see a small dot for so 9 micron and then cladding will be again 125 only. So whatever the laser goes, what you have given, it goes on the actual mode uh, on the core area and reach the other destination and then with the help of cladding, the signal will not move out. So this is the basic uh, components. So when you say fiber, it is a part of core and cladding only. You cannot separate the cladding from the core. So it's all uh, together, core and cladding, and then you have a coating on top of it, which is a 250 micron. So when you say cladding, 125 micron, and then inside you have a core, which you cannot separate it, whether it's a multimode or single mode. On top of that, whatever coating you are getting, if you, you would have seen in the site, outdoor cables and all, there will be thin fiber with the color, different colors. And that coating contains 250 micron of thickness. When it comes to the indoor fiber cable, then you have a buffer kind of insulation, like how we see insulation on the copper. And the insulation on top of the coating, which is called as a protective buffer, and then <clears throat> you have something called strength member. The strength member also people say kind of a soft material, they just cut and uh, throw it whenever they do the installation on the side. But this is also part of a glass fiber material only. So this is the material which is used in the bulletproof uh, jacketing uh, coats. So this is also part of a fiber only. So, and then you have a outer jacket. So this is makes a complete fiber construction. So this is a typical example for the indoor cable, whereas an outer cable, it stops with the 250 micron and then it goes into, into the different uh, tubes. So this is a Comsco fiber. It starts with a six fiber, two ton, two eighty fiber on the enterprise segment for all the background connectivity. For any application, if you need it on home connectivity or FTDX connectivity, yes, we do give single fiber cable also single fiber two fiber four also available but with the enterprise segment where if you want to work on the backbone connectivity we have from six fiber to 280 fiber and then for data centers applications we have a fiber core which can support for 3456 on a single jacket so that is 3456 fiber cores on a single jacket that is for the data center application and then type if you take you have a single mode uh, we call it as a OS2 so we know more OS1 like how we are not using VoM1 and VoM2. So, and then we have VoM3, VoM4, and VoM5. Bend intensity fibers. So, to have a better loss whenever you do the fiber patch card management or bending uh, radius, if you want to main that, there are specific bend intensity fibers are available, which takes care of the losses uh, and then gives a better performance. Then, construction type. So, you know where multi mode we need to use and single mode we need to use. So, generally, multi mode, it's within the building and you know the distance which can support for 10G application. So whatever area we are going to use it, whether it's inside the floor, you want it floor to floor or building to building. So select whatever, mostly all the indoor rated fiber cable called as a tight buffer. Tight buffer is nothing but you have a fiber and then coating, and then there is an insulation done on the coating. So that is called the tight buffering. Buffering has been done on the all the fiber cores, then you have a cable around strength or a median. So that is called the tight buffer uh, fiber cable. And then you have, you have something called loose tubes, unitube and multi-tube. Loose tubes, nothing but your outdoor fiber cable. Where inside the tube, you can, you'll find that fibers with the gel filled or gel without gel also. That is called the loose tube. 
whether it is a unit tube or multi tube. Unit tube in a sense, single tube will be there, 6 fiber, 12 fiber, 24. Beyond 24, you'll get a multiple tubes like this. So multiple tubes on a single fiber will be there, maybe 12 fiber or uh, 6 fiber or 4 fiber, depends on the constructions we call it as a multi tube fiber cable. And then armored or non armored or all, all the electric. So when I say armored, you have a metal armor here. You can see the metal armor. Uh, you can able to use it. There are some other applications where they say they don't want any metal armor, but they, they want a ruggedest cable to use it. So, for example, some of the projects uh, where the windmill, uh, you can see during this uh, winter, uh, we have uh, windmill functions will be more during summer. But in those areas, lightning keeps happening. So whenever lightning happens, it uh, damages your fiber cable. We have seen some other case study. So if you have a metal armor on the cable, it may affect this metal will capture, may receive this electrical uh, lightning and then damage the fiber cable. In that case, you can use a all dielectric. So there won't be any metal components in the fiber cable where, but you get a strength member, dielectric strength member, RFP rod, and then you have multiple tubes and then jacketing everything. So it depends upon the area, environmental, what type of uh, location you need it. So you need to select this kind of a different construction and then use it and different jacketing material. SDP, the low smoke zero gen P. So different options are available. So it's a general simple connectivity. So water fiber cable, for example, if you are doing 12 fiber cable or six fiber, both the end um, same components required. So if you have a two fiber, for example, two fiber, so both the fiber need to do the uh, splicing now. So nowadays we are not doing any direct connectorization. So we use a pigtail. It's nothing but one end connector other than bare fiber. And then you do the splicing and then connect it. So whatever you are doing it other one end. So same thing you need to do it on the other uh, end also. So right from your wall mount box, so whether it is the indoor wall mount or outdoor enclosures, uh, we can able to support a rack mountable. We have one U, two U space, and then four U. Um, if you want an adapter plate separately, pigtail separately, and then splice tray, we can give. Or if you want to have a cassette, in single cassette itself, you have a pigtail inside it, and then splice tray. So everything put together as a uh, one single component will, will be coming. Bring the fiber cable, bring it to the LU, do the splicing everything. Insert this cassette into the panel. So your work is done. Or you can use adapter uh, pack separately and then space it. So multiple combinations are available uh, right from six fiber till uh, one ended to ports you can able to support. <laughs> this is the joint closure. Fiber optic uh, space closure. So we do support on the uh, IP rating uh, closures where you can do the spacing and then uh, Feel it properly and then you can put it under the water also. So it can it can be there up to five meters on the condition. So proper ceilings are available. And there is a something called a fast 450. So which is a gel ceiling that is again a patent solution. So generally any splicing you're doing it outside. So it will be heat shrink will be done. If you want to add additional points or any service, if you want to do it, either you need to peel out this heat shrink and then rework on it. But with the help of FOSC 450 model, there is a gel sealing in it. You can unwind it and then remove everything, do the work again, you can seal it again. So that gel sealing is again patent product. So we'll share those product uh, catalog maybe after this session. So let's see some few slides on the data centers. Before moving to power fiber system. <clears throat> In the data center, you see uh, we have three different types. One is the uh, enterprise segment. So enterprise segment is nothing but if customer is having a data center on their own premises, whether it's a five rack or 10 rack or 20 racks, they manage all the you know, power cooling uh, requirement, everything that is called the enterprise segments. And then other one is a multi-tenant data center where customer takes space with the third party, like a Tata, ECT, NDT, or there are different players are available. So where they go and take a space for whatever number of racks required. So that, that third party will manage all the power cooling requirement, uh, bandwidth, everything. So customer will go there and then take only the spaces. So they may have a, a particular gauge and then uh, secure their server racks, and then they use it to third party space. So they know to worry about their own premises, what uh, power cooling, everything they need to manage. 
The other one is the cloud data center. So only the space they'll take it. So physical system, they may not know where physically it is located, but they take a space space on the cloud uh, data center. So if you see the data center connectivity, if it is a small segments where you can have a centralized uh, design, one you will you'll have a main distribution rack location. What the number of racks you are having, you bring all the cables directly to this main distribution, do the patching to all the ports, and then connect all your servers. So this is applicable when you have a limited number of server racks. But when it comes to the zone concept, then you will have more number of rows are there. Then bringing all the cable to one particular location may not be possible because you need to have a lot of pathway system. Then every rack you need to bring all the cables. So what they do is every row they make a end of the row rack or middle of the row. That is why they call it say MOR or EOR. So if it is the end of the row, they call it say EOR rack. Or if it is 10 racks, assume that you have a 10 or 12 rack. Middle, they make one particular rack that is called as a MOR. From there, that particular that track will serve for that particular row itself. Only this MOR and uh, EOR will have a connectivity to the main locations. There is one more concept called top of the rack design. So normally you would have seen tar switches and all. So assume that nowadays the uh, real estate cost is very more, whereas inside the data center, they try how much rack they can able to place on the given server uh, space. They try to add more number of racks. Inside the rack also, they say how much space they can utilize. So nowadays we are seeing some of the racks coming beyond 50U also. So 42, 45 and beyond 50, 52 and all, we have seen some of the racks inside the data centers. So they may not give space, more space for all the cabling equipment. So let's assume on a particular 40, we just take it as a standard as a 45, 42 rack. They'll try to put more number of servers there. Assume that if you want to give some 24 uh, ports of primary copper points and 24 secondary, assume that you need a 2U rack space on only for the planet. Then 48 cables will be coming from that particular rack. Imagine if it is a 10 racks on a single draw. Imagine 488 cables. 480 cables will travel from one particular row to end of the row or middle of the row. Then you need to put another panels, everything then. So more number of space required to mount all your panels. So now there is a concept called top of the rack design. So what they are doing is every top of the server rack or inside the rack itself, they'll put a switches. Either it's a 48 port or 24 ports or one switch for two server rack, they place it. And then with the patch code, they started running. So no need of any copper cabling record inside the data centers. So only thing is the fiber cable link is required from the main distribution to this particular rack. If, if they are placing individual switch on individual rack, so then individual rack record only fiber cables. So if, you, if, they, are, if they are placing two switches for uh, one switches for two rack, then only one uh, fiber link record for that particular rack uh, switch lo locations. So how we are going to do the design now? So whether we are going to do the splicing method? No. So if, for example, if you see the Ethernet roadmap on the connectivity. So earlier we started with the duplex one. So two port application like a single uh, single fiber for trans, single fiber for receive. So we started in 1983. We started with the 10 Mbps, then 100, then 1000. The 1000 become 1 gig, 1 gig become 10, 40, 100. Now. The trend, if you see, we are moving towards terabits now. So in future, we are going to get uh, bandwidth on terabits now. There are some of the applications which is going to be functional parallel transmission. So it is no way the duplex ports. So maybe in few custom places, you may notice uh, customer asking uh, MPO connectors or MTP connectors. So it will be a parallel transmission. When we say parallel transmission, more number of fiber. Here till LC, it is a single connector for single fiber. So when we have a LC duplex patch, that is a two fiber, one connector for one fiber, other connector for one fiber. But here in the parallel transmission, there will be a connector called the MPO, multi push on connector. Multiple fibers will be there in single connector itself. Either it can be eight fiber, 12 fiber, or 24 or 16 fiber. So there are some other application which can support on, uh, on two fiber as well as the parallel transmission, like 40 or 100 gig. So the two fiber, what we have mentioned here, 40 or 100 gig. In the beginning side, we have mentioned that's SWDM technology, short wave division multiplexing, where in single fiber, you have a four different wavelengths, like 850, 880, 910, and 940. Generally, we use a 850 nanometer wavelength, but whereas if you want to have a 
40 gig on single fiber in this duplex. So it will be on four different wavelengths. If it is 100 gig, every lane will carry a 25 gig. If it is a 40 gig, every lane will carry 10 gig of connectivity. So that 10 into 4, 40. If it is 100, 25 gig into 4, it will become a 100 gig connectivity. So these are the MPO connectors. So here you can see uh, 8 fiber row. Now whatever uh, SFP we are talking till 10 gig on LC. Now it will be called as a QSFP. It will be on MPO connector here and you can see there is a 4 fiber and then last 4 fiber. So 4 for trans and then 4 for receive. This is called as a parallel transmission. More number of fibers on a single connector itself. So when you want to have a connectivity between tracks, we have a trunk cable which comes in 12 fiber as well as 24 also. So future any connectivity inside the data center, there won't be any splicing or manual transmission. It's all purely on trunk cable connectivity only. Here you can see the trunk cable MPU 8, 12 or 24. Let's say there is a two racks if you want to connect rack one and rack two. Uh, let's say distance is 30 meters. So you don't need to lay a 30 meter of fiber cable, do the splicing, everything. You take a 30 meters of trunk cable where one end you have a MPU connector. Both ends you have a MPU connector. And you have a cassettes on both sides. Just insert into the cassette, your connection is immediately ready. So these are the cassettes. You will come get it. The back side you have a MPU connector. Other side also you have a MPU connector. So front side you have a LC ports. Just this cassette connect this MPU connector. It's all factory terminated connector and tested. So you don't need to do any testing at the side. Just plug and play only. Just plug into the cassettes at both the end. With the help of LC patch card, you can able to connect. Today you may connect 10 gig connectivity between this rack. Tomorrow, if you want to connect, convert it to 100 gig where it is required a parallel transmission. So you can remove this MPO cassettes, put the adapter, start using with the MPO connector with the same trunk cable. So you don't need to change the entire connectivity. So this are some of the cassettes. So for example, uh, given uh, here. So it here said you will get a MPO connectors based on the trunk cable design. So you can able to choose the uh, right trunk cable, right connector, and then right cassettes. So you have a fiber panel. So only thing is you need a screw driver to mount this panel. Rest everything is a plug and play. No other tools is uh, required. So this is one of the picture which is installed in the sites. So there is no splicing at all in the rear side. Here you can see how many number of fibers are connected in the front side as well as the rear side. And there is no splicing. All the trunk cables are comes in. And then you can spool the remaining cable and then connect all your MPU cable into the cassettes. These are the pre terminated cassettes in the front side. So finally, we are in the session for this uh, powered fiber cabling systems. So uh, we discussed about PoE. So generally what we are doing is we lay a power cable separately and then network cable, then connect your device, devices, or it will be on PoE, power over Ethernet. So limitation is only 100 meters only. So beyond 100 meters, beyond 100 meters, how what we need to support. So where this takes place, mostly it will be on campus uh, requirement or smart cities or airports. So those places only the distance length will be increased where you need to have a perimeter CCD connectivity or any utterance system on the entrance of the factory. More de devices are spread across the camps or uh, in airports. So every 100 meters of radius uh, circle points, you cannot keep on adding a racks. So what we are doing as of now in the site is we are keep on adding more number of racks where we put a small switch there, small uh, power supply unit, battery, EPS, do the splicing, and then you take a copper cable connected, maybe four or five devices only you are able to connect. Then you may add a, another rack. So to avoid this, so our system will support 30 times of the regular distance. When you say 30 times, so a regular supporting system is 100 meters. With the help of 30 times, it can go up to 3000 meters that is a three kilometer so how it works this is a poe extender which records at your user uh, end your ip camera or, or any of the ip device which works on the poe it can be your wi-fi access points or cctv or anything so how it functions we have something called hybrid cable which is nothing but both the city have a copper and then fiber so this is a three layer uh, cable so both the city have a copper conductor. It, it will be on 16 AWG or 12 AWG. And then middle you have a fiber uh, post. And then you need a PoE extender at the user end. You either it's a camera or any any IP device which works on PoE. It comes in single port as well as a two port. And then you need a power supply unit at your rack end. 
So it's a simple solution. It works on the DC power supply from the rack itself. From the centralized rack itself, you will be giving a DC power supply through this hybrid cable. And then the DC power supply unit will be connected to your EPS power supply at the rack. So you don't need to have any power supply recommended. So this cable will carry a DC power supply from the switch. This fiber also will carry a network connectivity from the fiber switch. So this cable will carry DC power supply fiber and directly goes to the user location and then it gets terminated to this POE extender. Once it terminated, then output will be RJ45. So with the RJ45 simple patch card, you can able to connect all your end devices. So if it is a 15 watts requirement only for the end device, it can go up to 3 kilometer. If it is a 30 watts of requirement for your camera or PTZ camera, it can and go up to 1.6 only. So we have a separate tool for this power fiber uh, calculator. So in our website, you can start using it so that if any requirement is there, if any design support or technical technical support, you can reach us. Uh, we on um, Supreme, we can work out and then uh, suggest the bill of material. So these are some of the installed pictures. We, we have done it in one of the locations in Chennai. So this is a rack location where you can see the DC uh, power supply, the AC to DC power supply unit. Power supply unit and then rectifier, you have a distribution models connected to the UPS and then you have a fiber switches, fiber switches and then fiber panel. So rear side, if you see whatever the copper contentry has in, so you can split this cable. So this cable, you can peel it separately. You can bring this fiber separately, copper separately. This copper goes to the rear side of this power supply unit, the like plus minus for the DC output, and then the fiber one goes to the fiber relay. So patching is given um, between fiber switch and the fiber ports, and then this copper connected taking a DC power supply unit, and it comes to the extender here. So it is a IP rated uh, outdoor uh, usable. So that cable has come along with the construction inside the pole itself gets terminated. And then with the help of outdoor patch cards, we are connected to the camera. So this is one of the customer where uh, typically the other area, it's kind of open source. So they don't have any power source or any buildings or racks to make camera connectivity. So they have used this power fiber uh, solution. So almost eight, 85 cameras, we are connected in a single campus with this uh, PFCS solution. So this is a single port uh, PVE extender and this is a two port PVE extender. So even though this cable can be buried directly, but um, they used a proper HDV content to secure this cable physically. Even this is installed on the high tension electrical tray itself. You can see this uh, POE extender. Since it is a DC power supply unit, so there won't be any issues on laying in the uh, electrical trays. So they are connected with the PTZ camera. So almost it is functioning for more than five years now in this project. And there's a typical picture taken from one of the airport. The airport, again, you have uh, more number of devices coming across the campus. Again, every 100 meters, you cannot have uh, a rack location. So this is also connected with the PFCS uh, solution only, or PA extender. And then with the help of outdoor patch cards, we are connected to the device. So we have come to an end for this uh, session. So from Comscope, we can able to support on copper fiber wi-fi wireless whether start from your uh, your home access connectivity till your central office connectivity requirements smart buildings any data centers anything related to the communications or connectivity requirement comscope support for it so any any questions you can put it on the chat box so that you can uh, reach us or if you have any Design support required or any technical support, you can contact us. Uh, uh, we are ready to support on this. Any any questions from anybody? What is the number of fiber cable to be used and what is the DC voltage? See, DC voltage, it is, a, it is there in 24, 24 or 48 volts available. Again, uh, we need to understand what type of end devices they are going to use it. Based on the power requirement for the device, we can work on the uh, power supply unit. 
and the fiber two fiber as a regular connectivity if it is a single device two fiber record if it is a two device if you want to connect and then four fiber record so this hybrid cable is available from two fiber till 12 fiber and we have seen some of the wi-fi access points uh, which is coming up with a dc input with the fiber ports in those cases you don't no need to have any uh, PoE extender, so you can bring those cable directly and give the DC power supply to this uh, Wi-Fi access points and then fiber ports. So immediately your Wi-Fi access points can be enabled. But uh, sir, with a single fiber, can I have two cameras connected? Uh, no, sir. In this solution, no. It is again enterprise segment where you are connecting with the two uh, traditional method of two fiber connectivity. The single fiber means where in the FTDX concept you can able to connect it, where you need to use a OLT, OLT component and then use it. With this yeah. PFCS solution, it is a two fiber one. Okay, but with if, uh, if it's suppose, as you said, uh, if I can use two fiber and uh, with mm -hmm. using the DC voltage, I can have a um, like a local uh, normal PoE switch and uh, can I also connect four cameras possible? Is that see, possible? The PoE switch should take, uh, if the PoE switch required a AC power supply, then again, this solution not required. You need to bring a ac power supply unit no no i'm but talking this... about from your from your dc voltage supply mm. i can use a normal poe switch and i can also connect it right a normal poe switch uh, required a dc power supply input from so if uh, any that POE switch hmm. yeah that already you have your dc voltage right so from that DC i can voltage. use a converter yeah see if, if that uh, poe device sub takes that power then you can use it but we have not seen any uh, POE uh, switch or small four port uh, which can take a DC voltage only. If device mm. is there, then it will support. And the POE extender, what is the normal port? That is, that is kind of a, that will take DC power supply as well as fiber, kind of a media converter. Okay, and how many ports it can be connected? As you said, one if I'm port, using one two... port or two ports, both options are available. Yeah. A maximum is two or it can go up to four also? Two, two, maximum two. As of now, two. Uh, other developments are happening now. As of now, what are part terms we have? Single port and two port only. Okay, thank you. CC as any list, yes. So as a standard within the limitation of 100 meters, you can use it inside. Some places where if in an unfortunate situation, if the cable is cut, you can use the CC also to join it. So the connector number of connections as per standard, the four connectors between one end to the other end, it should not cross it. So for example, if, if you want to place the CCA connector at the tray itself where, and then Wi-Fi you want to take it for two meters, three meters, yes, you can uh, use it for two to three meters. But again, with the help of CC, you cannot uh, extend the cable length. It should fall within the 100 meters rule, including patch codes. So any any other questions? Okay, sir, we go to the QA section, sir. Sorry, sorry, Pradeep. We'll go get the question and answer section, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why I cleared the questions, whatever I was, got it in the chart. Fine, fine. We will share the document. Uh, there is a question. Can you share this PPT? Yes, we will share. You can uh, I hope you all of you have registered uh, with the link given uh, by Supreme Team. We'll send out a uh, product details, what are products we have covered, uh, like PFCS uh, data centers or some of the important things. So we'll share it to you. Um, we'll send out an email. We will get an email from uh, Supreme Team. And uh, any any other questions? I hope uh, this session would have been useful for you since uh, again time limitation. There are a lot of things to discuss to cover. So every every topics we have a in depth course. So you can visit our Comscope website or comscopetraining.com. 
there are some of the courses certification courses are available uh, you can able to visit uh, those websites and then register yourself attend some of the webinars or pre recorded webinars courses are there so where you will get a certificates and then uh, uh, in website also you can go to the comsco website you have a resources tab uh, where you will find a lot of calculators some of the documents to read so maybe keep uh, keep some time on every week so that you can go through all the documents you can uh, send all your email IDs to our supreme team so we'll try to send the regular uh, technical updates to all of you so every week we keep on sending some of the technical updates we will also add it add all your email IDs to that list so that you will get a periodic technical updates and uh, you can reach us any support required So thank you, thank you so much. So thanks, uh, Supreme Team, for arranging this uh, wonderful platform to thank discuss you, with the people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sir. So what to uh, Krishant? Okay, sir. Fine. Thank you, team. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sudhir, can wait up.